of Ramco Global. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend uh, Jay Krishnan Rajagopal. Jack, for you. Thank you so much, uh, Praveen and uh, Mr. Ramdas. Uh, it's really a privilege to be called again. Uh, I'm, my audio, my audio is uh, uh, right for the forum, or uh, yeah, 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 it's good. Okay. So I don't want to add much about myself. Just one thing is that I'm also a student, which Praveen uh, knows, but he has not put it out. Whatever I am in my experience, I am now still kind of pursuing my PhD in uh, uh, what we call as uh, adaptive neural network. So without much ado, uh, today uh, the topic that we are, I am trying to share my knowledge is in the space of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, IoT, and I will slightly touch upon my favorite subject, blockchain, also in one of the slides. Uh, any questions, anything, you can put it to the forum on the chat session. Uh, we'll do it at the end of it if it's to be responded, or we can always connect offline and continue our discussions, okay? Slides. Let me set the context. If it's to be responded on and continue this. Sorry, was that a question to me? Yes, yes. sir. You continue the question. The the context. Uh, the will, uh, Perfect. Okay. So Offer. the coverage we have for today's uh, session from my side is about what Sorry, was that to be able to uh, share this knowledge with you. Uh, nowadays, there is nothing called uh, what the customer requirements are. Uh, called model. Rather, uh, it's about the customer's desire. Uh, the days of uh, uh, meeting the demands are gone. Uh, we're actually trying to go to the next stage of uh, understanding what the customer is wishing for, the desire aspect. Uh, I'll, I'll touch upon very, very uh, top level what is IoT and what is AI per se and the common world that they live in and why they should why they should uh, collaborate uh, uh, ai and iot per se i'll also share a couple of uh, uh, use cases uh, which are in ramco systems we have delivered to our customers in addition to that i'll also uh, share and speak upon some of the uh, global use case models which uh, by itself iot would not have actually uh, matured but with the uh, collaboration of uh, either machine machine learning or uh, intelligence from in a, a data system or anything to do with uh, data lakes, combination of that, how those use cases are now getting uh, fructified or getting utilized in the global markets. So some of the materials as disclaimers, which I've used uh, books, references, uh, in addition to the research uh, lab uh, from Ramco Systems per se. So what you're seeing uh, at uh, the starting of uh, our uh, presentation is basically, what is the purpose of IoT at the end of the day, right? I mean, I am not an engineer as a disclaimer. You are mostly all of you are engineers per se. And there is always a purpose uh, when you uh, design a system, a more so a, a device, right? Or a sensor, or anything for that matter. At the end of the day, the purpose of that is to sense something and to alert uh, a, an audience, could be anybody, even could be another device or another system for that matter. But at the end of the day, everything is to do is uh, finally coming down to increasing the productivity. It could be to reducing waste, from very old days where there was a simple system where you could send SMS to stop uh, a, a water uh, pump in, in a distant field, or increasing efficiency to the point where scatter devices uh, used to ensure that when there was a certain thermal output, heat generated or heat sensed, it shuts down or cools down, or uh, certain steps were taken to ensure that the efficiency was increased by uh, certain steps. Uh, in the same uh, follow-up reduced downtime, the more and more the wear and tear of any device uh, is small or big for that matter. Keep a tab of it, uh, look at what their performance levels are. And when the performance level goes down from a threshold perspective, automatically to be able to uh, send out a, a requirement for a downtime. And uh, in uh, 24 by seven industries, downtime means there has to be adaptive systems or fallback systems which has to be prepped up and kept ready so that the other system, when it's taken down, the backup systems take over. And finally, uh, extend the equipment life, right? The fact is, 
uh, we are talking about some of the equipments in industries, let's say in uh, energy generation, uh, air device or air uh, plant would cost close to about a billion dollars plus. That being the case, the constituent of all the devices in that plant, if their life is extended by even a, a fraction of 1% to 2%, that itself is actually the revenue of most of the small companies in India at this point in time. So that being the case, IoT has a, a genesis of an industry or as an offering was brought in to finally address all of these possibilities, very specifically increase productivity of either the system or the device or the plant or the organization or the purpose itself. taking it slightly ahead and trying to uh, narrow it down to one industry which i always liked uh, from my very old days in ibm uh, in the automotive industry uh, ford was one of the uh, customers which we used to work as uh, um, service uh, level uh, uh, systems engineers so iot is a, a process by which each aspect of an automobile uh, when it's an automobile it could be as simple as yeah, yeah, electric motorbike or for that matter, uh, yeah, a 16 rig uh, uh, truck that actually is uh, moving across uh, the US uh, geography or for that matter, cross geographical uh, movement of uh, automotive uh, just for the purpose of uh, pleasure travel or leisure travel. At any point in time, having sensors, having devices, having specific uh, aspects of the performance or the wear and tear of the specific, uh, let's say tires for that matter, or let's say uh, uh, oil pressure of when it comes to either the clutch or the, the brake pads for that matter, or for that matter, just the um, uh, ambient uh, heat inside the cabin or the ambient heat inside the engine of uh, an automotive. All of those things, uh, which were all manually sensed about 20, 25 years back. Now, last decade, Everything has been digitized, and most of you know this already. Nowadays, uh, very rarely you will see uh, a, a spanner and a, a screwdriver as a weapon of or a, or a choice of uh, instrument by a mechanic nowadays. Nowadays, most of the mechanics carry a, a, an iPad, which has got uh, a multi sensory uh, cable, which they take it and open our uh, hood of the automotive, plug into the, the computer's. Uh, when I say computer, that's the key part, right? They actually plug into the computer in our audio, in our automobile, and then understand what's happened. And now this is when there is physical connectivity. Now, if you actually extend that saying, as the vehicle is running, how would we be able to transfer this set of data or all of this data? And if we are able to real time, share this data with different, uh, in all uh, different interested parties, when we said interested parties, it could be to the manufacturer, it could be to the service provider, it could be to the insurance organization, it could be to the spare parts uh, uh, available on the road, or it could be for the fuel pump operator in the, in, in the journey that you have taken. If all of this data could actually be prepped real time and shared, that is the kind of uh, opportunity that IOT has created in the last decade plus. And uh, from being in, in R&D, most of this has now already come into a commercial existence. And uh, to my knowledge, uh, Europe uh, pretty much is now the, the leader in the space of IoT uh, centric uh, devices in the automotive space. I'm gonna show you three slides, uh, three uh, slides of the same content. It'll be interesting to know. The first slide is uh, from a, a research, uh, boutique research organization, which a long time back predicted saying by uh, 2020, uh, there will be 8 billion devices that would be, uh, and there's a disclaimer, not using mobile phones, right? So there'll be 8 billion devices that will actually be in use in, uh, in the uh, uh, business models, which means they would be either connected to each other or by themselves sharing some amount of data and serving a purpose. Now, hold on to this thought. We're talking about 8 billion devices in 2020, in 2014. Then uh, sometime back, uh, there was 2010, 12.5, which means in 2015, it was actually 25 billion as a prediction by Cisco. And Cisco, as you know, is pretty much uh, the leader in the space of connected devices now. And Cisco's prediction was that there will be uh, a 
possibility of 50 billion uh, devices connected. Uh, and this, uh, in a way, also includes uh, mobile uh, because they also are uh, network service providers for a lot, lot of automotive as well as uh, uh, internet as well as uh, mobility solutions. Now, the interesting aspect is in the same research report, there also was one small article to say in 2015, uh, around where uh, we're talking about matured markets, uh, comparing India and comparing matured markets. They said there is anywhere between five to 10 connected devices in every house today. And we would be like, I mean, I would say, what do you mean five connected devices in my house? I know there is nothing like that. But then if you if you calmly look around the, the what do you call living room that you are right now, right now you've got uh, probably your uh, TV turned on, then you've got a laptop, you've got a, uh, probably uh, your uh, uh, Wi-Fi turned on and probably your mobile is also turned on. Now, all of this could actually be interacting with one device, which could be your Wi-Fi or a repeater if your signal is low, or your mobile is connected to a data network on its own, which means by just the fact that we have spoken about a minute, we already have four connected devices in the in the house in India right now, which means if you take a, a exponential value of it in matured markets, this is cool. Possibility of 10 devices, yeah, we accept it. But then look at the ambition of Cisco. They're saying there'll be 50 devices connected in the house. Now, most of you would have seen a lot of videos where we talk about uh, there is a Alexa hub coming up or there is a Google uh, Home uh, hub coming up. All of these are focusing not on uh, aerospace or not on uh, earth shattering technologies. They actually are now converging to creating a unified home centric connected device ecosystem. Uh, now, Hold on to the thought. Uh, we had 8 billion in the previous slide. Now we have 50 billion in the next slide, including mobile also. Now there is this data from IDC, which is one other boutique uh, organization which puts out the data. And their point is the total number of available sensory objects, which is just not devices per se, we're talking about objects now. So which means now from the 2010 uh, times, 2014, 15 to 2020, now where we are, we actually have matured to understand IoT per se is not about we create something for the purpose of uh, transmitting data. What we understood is there are devices that were designed long term back before the word IoT itself was coined out. Those devices are also sensory and they also transmit something. Could be data, could be sensor, could be anything for that matter. Or that also we are talking about 212 billion sensory objects in the world today, which means eight to 50 to 212. This exponential growth is in the space of about nine years from the same set of the organization, which do it every year for that matter. Now, why I said that before talking about what could be IOT, what is the transport layer, what is, the, what is uh, AI, what all of those things, why? Because being a solutions leader uh, or for that matter, uh, uh, partly a successful entrepreneur, I always want to look at what is the business benefit that I'm giving to the, the customer? What is the business that I can show or take it to the market? At the end of the day, any research uh, requires money and each money has to be returned back with an interest. That's how I've learned my uh, lessons of having lost money in some of the ventures, but then made some money in other ventures, right? So if this is the kind of market that you're looking at, which means what could be the actual potential usage of this, commercial value of this, and from that, what's the revenue possibility? So I just leave the imagination to you now. I'll continue on. So uh, I'm not going to get challenged about uh, what is uh, IoT per se. IoT per se is very simple. It's a collection of a certain uh, uh, layers of information. Just give me one minute. Sorry, uh, I'm still working, uh, unfortunately. So I have to ensure my office phone is switched off. Sorry, for some time. So, okay. So, uh, what is a, a very simple high level a framework of an IoT architecture, right? What is IoT, right? IoT is is a thing. Uh, engineers don't 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 hit me. Say, how can you say what we create as a thing? But at the end of the day, that's how it is uh, from an architecture standpoint. It's it's uh, defined. It's not just a thing. It could also be an intelligent device and it need not be intelligent device 
static in one location per se, it could also be an edge device. The difference between a yeah, uh, sensory device to an edge device to actually a mesh, uh, meshable device or a, a swam device is all coming, coming, coming in the later part of the discussions. Uh, gateways, right? So some sensors uh, transmit data, some sensors uh, don't transmit. You have to physically go to it to pick up the data. Like in the initial example I gave, uh, you need to carry the iPad to the, the computer chip, computer array inside the car to be able to pick up the data. If not, if you want to actually transmit and uh, push it out to a specific uh, storage or uh, a transmitter or uh, a telecommunication network, then you use it the gateway. Network infrastructure, it's a, it's a, a coupling point from gateway to be able to transfer or transport the data uh, either repeatedly or on a given frequency or on a given event in databases. Now, you would think about what do you mean database on an IoT, right? The fact is whether there is database or not, every uh, IoT device or for that matter, every uh, capacitor, transistor or any specific IoT design based thing that we create has been designed to have some storage. So databases could be anywhere between yeah, a four kilobyte storage to nowadays we are getting, uh, 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 what would I say, uh, a RASP, uh, RASPi uh, for anything less, not less than even GBs of data being stored in those devices, right? So databases are now uh, yeah, a possibility and uh, device uh, uh, lean databases or uh, uh, what we call as distributed databases, uh, those are all now actually a part of the IoT architecture uh, with its uh, becoming more mature uh, with the requirements and the uh, demand coming from the various industry applications. Now, that's the second point and the last point from a database to the applications point of view. Where now with these uh, enabling functions where it has got intelligence which can be built on top of, it can now uh, transmit its information on a frequency or on demand and uh, it can actually uh, do that over uh, networks. Plus it can actually store if required, create intelligence to process that and uh, take that across to be able to put that into an application uh, storage or application infrastructure from where the scale on which the same data, either from one device or a set of devices can actually be uh, brought together, analyzed and then projected to the end consumers is the overall architecture on which the IoT sensory devices or IoT uh, process devices are, are created for. What we uh, define from uh, the connectivity stack perspective of an IoT is by design, IoT is for two things. One is to sense certain uh, information to where it is connected to or to be able to uh, provide that information through its uh, layer across to the end, uh, uh, through the transport layer, right? So we're talking about the physical device, which is where the things or the internet of things part come in. Then we also come from there to the, the next layer, which is the connectivity part of it. Could be intelligent or could be dumb. When I say dumb, it's, it's a direct cable to cable connectivity required. And aggregation of data and transformation of data. But that is where the gateway part comes in. So what we previously saw is something which you're putting in visual uh, representation. Storage and access, which is where our uh, part of the database, whether it is distributed data or uh, lean data or light data, which is available within the device or available at the gateway or beyond the gateway into a cloud, all those possibilities as a layer. And on top of it, applications which uh, use the data, which is available from various devices, for the purpose of the customers that they're serving. When I say purpose of customers they're serving, the same automobile data can be supplied to three different sets of customers. One to the manufacturer saying, what's the wear and tear of the automotive? Could be to the insurer saying, uh, what's the uh, behavior of the driver? Could be to the spare parts or uh, the services organization to say, this is now, uh, do you know so much, uh, this is now, uh, from a spare parts perspective or from actual parts perspective, you might want to actually uh, give a call to the owner and then uh, expedite the service date or for that matter, remind them that this, the service date is coming up. Why? Because this is the current state of a specific part. So those are the various parts, but all of that would depend on the same data. It's just about how you represent that data to the different audience, right? And finally, value. Now. I'm sure most of you would have seen that uh, 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 video just floating around a few years back 
where in which there is one insurance company of an automotive where they um, hit each other and then they wait for uh, hours to get there for the actual inspector to come and then the policies uh, shared in between each other and then it it takes eons for them to get dragged back towed back and then get the replacement and stuff like that and immediately after that there is another thing where there is a drone where it's called on by the automotive uh, uh, owner uh, of the uh, automobile automobile owner and then the drone comes in does an inspection and on on uh, call uh, real time the whole thing is resolved and both the parties who are involved in the accident just walk away happy now that is what is the sixth level as you put it as a value that was provided with the same set of devices but as different way of bringing together an ecosystem who at the end of the day makes the customer happy resulting which even at a point in time you want to have 10% premium added to the insurance that the customer takes on you they'll be happy because you actually save time and money for them when the actual incident happens that's where the value proposition comes in that's where most of us solution architects or business uh, service providers where make a difference understanding the underlying application systems and the architecture now from the uh, this is where we separate the the physical world and the data world layers 1 2 and 3 would have seen its its physical world its uh, engineering its uh, hard, hard uh, what would i say hardware uh, and network and component related but then from the point of 4 5 and 6 onwards that's where the application part comes in when you say application part there is data that data that's get generated across from, from these three layers either collectively or by individual layer but then take the data across and then be able to make sense out of it is where the layers 4 5 6 comes up so some of it which i have spoken to you already where in which what is the data that i am carrying it back to the consumer as information at the end of the day if if i don't provide the information to the consumer there is no point collecting the data right just dumping the data on the consumer is of no value so the idea is to create certain data models create the right amount of data and the right data and to be able to bring that together as contextual information so that the consumer now understands okay now the boiler plant that i have uh, commissioned right now in my plant let's say in waragada that boiler plant was supposed to run for let's say 26 days continuously now a sensory device says that it's it started on x date and now it's 24th day which means that 24th day could be where i set an alarm to say now send this i am now on 24 day continuous to the uh, uh, let's say the uh, plant in charge uh, which is the maintenance uh, officer or maintenance operator or maintenance lead why because it doesn't mean that at the day of 26 they should be aware to bring the fallback system so that this process continues and this uh, boiler plant now goes into maintenance why on 24th day this could be again de de dependent on the individual business but then what we have experienced this let's say in saint gobain's case they have to ensure that there is a, a pre work to create a maintenance work order for a given size of a boiler plant so many hours that needs to be if there is a, a requirement of a, a part to be changed it's not because warranted it's just cyclical so all of this required that the whole work order was automatically created sent across to the maintenance uh, in charge and that person also sends information in in real time across to their uh, uh, service operator or service provider and all of them gets notified that they assemble in the plant on the 26th day so that the fallback system now goes on to the shift it goes around the next 26 days and this plant uh, this uh, boiler uh, uh, is now taken into uh, taken down for maintenance and it is uh, a specific number of days now all of this is something which you we would just assume that hey this is just regular work what's the big deal about it but the fact was this all has been now done through sensory devices originally with scada now we are actually migrating that scada to an iot centric intelligent devices is the difference that's currently the actual uh, project that has been implemented in such come up some couple of those uh, large industries over there now how this is because the sensor just gave data that i am i am old so much but then taking the data that has been running from one first day to this day and on the 24th day triggering an alert saying that now take this send this information to four different stakeholders but the same data will go different to different stakeholder to the maintenance operator it just will say i am in 24th day please plan for the maintenance to the service provider it is going to say 
I am so and so. I am so and so device. I am so and so, and this is my number of uh, days that I work so far. So based on that, whatever is the service provider who's to bring the right right amount of person, right amount of uh, equipments to be able to service the the boiler plant has to come through. So that is another individual information. If for a reason there is a warrant there and there is a part that needs to be bought to be ordered for, then the vendor who is empanelled for that also has to be informed. All of this comes from the same data. So that difference between the data and information and propagation of the information to the different stakeholders is where the actual value proposition comes in. Right. So having said that, there are various ways and means by which that data can actually be sent across in the network. The device itself, if it is uh, built in that uh, design, can transmit the data directly to the stakeholder, or it actually puts all the data to uh, a, a gateway or a gateway-centric data source or cloud, for that matter, nowadays. And from the cloud, you can actually have applications to run on top of it, or you can provide over-the-air applications or OTAs, as we call, where in which from the device uh, by certain uh, communication protocols being enabled, the OTAs can directly speak to the specific stakeholder. And inform them what needs to be, right? So the reason why we talk about uh, transformation of data to information, most of which we spoke about previously, but the fact is, when we talk about data uh, in the IT world, it's very cheap. Why? Because it's repetitive and it keeps continuously happening. But data in the industrial scale is never cheap because. That instance, that moment, the part goes right or goes wrong, cannot be repeated for the purpose like in the IT. We call about simulation. We talk about this bug cannot be repeated. Let's recreate the bug. We can't do that in the IoT world, right? I mean, all of you know that. If it's something is going wrong, it needs to be found at that point going wrong. You can't be saying, okay, let's see whether it actually breaks. That cannot be the whole purpose of this. Uh, the whole purpose of this whole IoT centric uh, business model, right? That's why we talk about data, right data at the right time, transformed into information on real time, and ensuring that the breakdown doesn't happen, but it's predicted or prescribed to the right people, right stakeholder. Now, all of this will also mean that, in addition to the existing device uh, from a manufacturer's perspective, sensors to be added to the on top of it is going to be a cost. And that cost of ownership will be uh, multiplied by uh, not just the sensory data, to, sensory device to be attached to it, how to collect the data, how to process the data, whom the data should go, what information is also going to be the total cost of ownership if you're looking at IoT centric business model. Uh, I did not put to confuse you this slide, but to be very frank, this is just even a very, very small fraction of actual devices that actually are in existence today uh, in the uh, in the industry uh, across the globe i think somebody has just uh, did a marking on this is this something which we can remove or uh... i don't know sir you continue that uh... okay because it's going to be recorded this is going to be a irritation for people seeing it that's fine okay oh i think people are having fun in the evening right so Okay, fine. So these are all some of uh, the different protocols that currently are being used right now. Are we going to do something about it, or we just leave it there? The, the scratches. Just to continue that. Okay, no problem. I don't have any challenge on that. So continue, sir. Some of some of these uh, uh, protocols, some of these. Uh, uh, um, Keywords or uh, technologies or uh, uh, what we call as uh, infrastructure are all just a fraction of what's currently being used in different uh, parts of the industries as well as across the world, right? The traditional model has always been client server models, but there is always a, a master slave approach or a client server approach, but in which they have uh, lots of clients connected to a server, and hence there are a lot of overheads congestions and each client will have to have its own inherent knowledge, inherent intelligence, and uh, to be able to uh, update or upgrade even a client or set of clients was always going to be very, very uh, challenging and costly exercise per se. And uh, deriving uh, uh, combined data or a collaborative data from these uh, devices uh, or these clients across to a server and then to the consumer is always going to be a second set of multiple challenges across. Now, that something gets changed 
in looking at iot as uh, uh, the protocol or iot as the opportunity here right uh, all of us know that the iot's are pretty much uh, uh, at the point of sensory it's going to be messaging architecture it is either going to be uh, uh, publishing itself uh, uh, whatever the data that is got or if there are repeaters or devices that actually not just uh, uh, publish they also subscribe to it if they are into edge devices or machine or uh, swam devices in that being the case not only that they store and transmit their, their sensory data they also uh, from the nearby uh, uh, devices collect data why why is this uh, pubsub uh, kind of a device being designed per se because it reduces the again the cost of investment and cost of ownership let's say we are in an agricultural field and let's say we talk about uh, for a given acreage which actually currently in use in in one of the friends friends plant in uh, hosur uh, given acreage for uh, uh, one acre the friend of mine needs to have 16 devices connected to be able to provide what is the atmospheric uh, count or what is the uh, humidity that's available and resulting based on that at a certain point in time the drip irrigation starts automatically now for him to be able to put this kind of a device on all 16 of them that he has to invest it is quite costly and that is where uh, being from infosys these guys came up with the concept where why do it for all 16 why didn't we come up with a pubsite model where one of the four will actually have this uh, uh, subscription model also where the other three will, will publish the data to and i one device would actually be the hub and spoke and from that hub it will actually transmit directly to the other hub or to the central uh, storage available within the uh, town house that was a model where it was very very uh, positive where they were able to cut their cost uh, from where it was like close to about 2 and a half to 3 lakhs for a per acre of an, uh, for per, per acre of investment to less than about 60000 rupees that's a huge difference resulting which one their investment came down and their also utilization of water and irrigation also was quite optimal at that point in time why i mention mqtt i mean most of you already know that the mqtt one was the most uh, uh, secure and most used uh, widely used protocol nowadays uh, i'm sure some of you know about the uh, biggest and most powerful uh, messaging uh, tool right now uh, which actually uses mqtt as its uh, foundational protocol and that's not whatsapp overlay networks uh, overlay networks is very interesting for us the reason because uh, overlay is something where it doesn't disturb the existing in investments being made in assets and even for that matter networks it actually uh, sits on top of it and it just kind of creates a machine model uh, wherein which it uh, allows the existing sensors to be utilized or to be brought into an informational uh, uh, network and just by the way of their overlay design or machine design they ensure that the sensory devices data and the the concept i told about the the repeater and subscriber model between them they are able to pick up the right amount of data on a given frequency and push it across to the gateways and the data storages or the data lakes for that matter and from there they are able to push uh, all the uh, data to an enterprise uh, information model and from there uh, convert the data to reports analytics and uh, publish that across to the various audience within their enterprise i am not going to explain this uh, because uh, uh, pretty much what we spoke in the last uh, three slides is what actually we have put on on a, a visual representation from the overlay diagram perspective Uh, but just to uh, highlight the uh, overlay the uh, overlay uh, network architecture is slightly much more uh, optimal compared to uh, from ground up designing the entire uh, infrastructure of iot uh, to be able to uh, speak to each other so it, it takes into account the existing investments made even in legacy systems also like scada in as compared to the industrial iot devices now Uh, more than uh, the inherent uh, industrial uh, uh, network of uh, iot devices industrial uh, information network or enterprise systems the partner ecosystems are much more important per se now uh, going back to the same automotive uh, model uh, what we have uh, what i have kind of shared is the ecosystem is what makes it interesting the same data of one uh, car and the driver and the some of the car when i say some of the car its parts its tires its brakes its engine its everything of that 
all the data goes across to the various stakeholders, various ecosystem partners, and each of them analyze it for their purpose of it. And that's where the partner ecosystem is important. There is no need for all of them to be able to uh, swim around the same car, rather they wait for that data that is required for them, or all the data gets pulled through an OTA over the air app from the car across to a storage on the cloud, uh, maybe hosted by the automotive manufacturer or service provider. And then these ecosystem partners kind of come together on that cloud storage of the data lake and from their pick data and convert that into reports or analytics that they want, and then come back to either the manufacturer or the service provider or the customer itself, who's the driver per se, and then go about their business. That ecosystem is something which makes IoT much more viable and much more uh, uh, result oriented and uh, achieves a better return of investment uh, uh, over time of usage, over time of deployment, over time of usage. Uh, disclaimer, we have uh, partnerships from Ramco Systems uh, with two of the biggest uh, IoT uh, device manufacturers in the globe. So uh, coming into this, uh, why is so much of interest happening in IoT today? And uh, these snippets that I've kind of pulled together to provide it out is something to tell you that this has been a buzz going around for not now, probably a decade to my understanding, uh, or probably even before that. 2009 is when I was first introduced to uh, <clears throat> uh, what we call a smart uh, meters in Australia from uh, uh, where one of the largest uh, uh, utilitarian companies in Australia, specifically South Australia, was uh, completely replacing all analog uh, meters to smart meters for the purpose of tracking the usage of three key uh, utilities. One was gas, second was uh, uh, hot water, and the third was electricity. So this was something where uh, using Oracle's enterprise solutions for information systems, uh, customer support systems, that was something which was a first information for me to see what was a smart world to start with from IBM perspective. I mean, all of you know that smart is the word pretty much was coined by IBM per se to, to uh, deploy and then smart city, which Singapore was the prototype and it's currently still getting implemented on a continuous basis is also IBM's research uh, uh, pilot. Now, that 2009, about a decade back, the concept of uh, not having the need to actually go to a, a, a customer's, consumer's house or an office to be able to understand what's happening uh, on all the utility that I, as energy utility provider, giving to the consumer was something was uh, loft about uh, to an extent. And then over one and a half, two years, when this project was completed successfully, now that has become now the norm. And I think what's happening in India also is that uh, even in the flat which I'm staying now in Bangalore, we're talking about smart water meters. Uh, what is basically to see what is the inflow of water that's happening just from the data perspective. Right now we're talking about meter devices and subsequently this meter devices can be an intelligent device also going forward, which is what was there in the case of uh, an Australian project. Now this, 10 years back and now it's going to get more interesting and more uh, chit chat bring the world on the IoT basis. Now what could be the uh, various uh, industries or uh, industrial applications or fields or verticals or opportunities from an IoT perspective? Smart factory. I think uh, most of us already know this uh, case where the Fiat uh, factory right now in India uh, runs at uh, uh, a 15 percent uh, human potential human capacity as against 100% of another manufacturer, which means the balance 85% of it is completely automated, robotized and interconnected between themselves so that the entire uh, floor actually is filled with specific interconnected communicating devices. And uh, the assembly line is manned only by X percentage of a human being at this point in time. Now, when I, that is something which we know from uh, uh, automotive perspective from an example, but we from Ramka have seen this happening in multiple other industries, it's industrial houses. One being our own parent company, Ramco Simmons, or Ramco uh, uh, Industries, uh, which actually caters to multiple industrial houses in manufacturing. Connected marketing. This is something which we can need not even worry about. So, I mean, again, about uh, 15 years back for that matter, we have talked about uh, uh, marketing when you are near a certain shop, right? Uh, suddenly we will get a message saying, hey, why don't you come into my shop? I'm just about 100 meters from your place where you're walking by. And this used to happen where we used to have 
the Bluetooth enabled from our mobiles versus those days, uh, near site marketing or ambient uh, ambient uh, uh, geo fenced marketing was something which was uh, experimented. Now it's become a, a norm. I mean, like if you go into a Starbucks today, you are, you don't have to actually go find out what is the offer. The moment uh, the Starbucks knows your uh, mobile is on, it's you are inside the geo fence. Automatically, the sense tells you that you are a so and so. You have done so many purchases. You have so much of Starbucks points. You can now utilize that. And if you want, now I can have the person sent to your place where you are which means not just the uh, data about what you are, where you are sitting in Starbucks from a planogram perspective, that also is also available to the Starbucks. And this is something which we know for sure it's happening today in the world across across the various Starbucks uh, locations. And like that, so many other uh, um, industrial processes, opportunities and the fields where in which IoT is uh, now becoming a, a default and an important uh, constitutive. Now, all that we spoke about, uh, introducing IoT, introducing the opportunities, introducing this, finally comes back to the real dollars, right? And uh, who better in the world to tell about, uh, if we're talking about an opportunity, put a number on the opportunity, right? Than GE. Uh, most of us know who, who GE is, uh, General Electric One Company per se. General Electric is a group which practically is in every uh, business from it's uh, first uh, uh, business model to my understanding, which is basically from oil to energy, to agriculture, to pesticides, to anything and everything that uh, GE has touched on it. And for that matter, GE's projection of what could be actually be an industrial internet of things or an IOT uh, from a realizable uh, revenue or business benefit perspective is close to about $276 billion. And this is just two years back. Uh, when they said this two years back, at the time, the uh, expected growth uh, of the, the world per se was actually in a negative because we are, in, we are actually in the degrowth stage. 2020, now if the corona does not, did not happen, uh, assuming, then this would actually started growing. Now, what is the impact of corona per se? What's the impact of COVID-19 and the lockdown and on the economy? Something which none of the models have ever understood, ever expected. Now, there are models being projected from a theoretical perspective, but we need to see to know that. Two years back, $2.6 billion, it's a huge number to put on probably 50 billion devices generating that revenue, right? And that too from one industrial house perspective. If you take that and let me apply this uh, as an exponential model of, let's say, 10 industrial uh, organizations across the globe, we're talking about a minimum of uh, a few trillion dollars of economy that can actually be expected in the next 10 to 15 years from just the concept of IoT and the data that the IoT devices generate. So why now, uh, as I said, 15 years back, 20 years back, even 10 years back from my experience itself, things from metered devices to smart devices actually started, why now? Why is this uh, kind of uh, storming up or brewing up to say, okay, let's do it now kind of stuff? Cost of adding devices has come down drastically. When we say cost of adding devices, the concept of cloud and the connectivity and locally available resources of devices to be able to create. And uh, even interestingly, one more uh, new technology which has added to the advantage to is this uh, 3D graphics or 3D printing. That also has made a big advantage from this in this area. More important than the cloud AP economy. Uh, when we talk about connected systems and ecosystems of partners coming together, not one company is going to write what all of us should do, uh, which was those days where somebody wrote what is the process and there was a standard driven uh, approach and each of them had to contribute to the standard in the same way across the entire process. Now that is broken down to only what area I am interested in. If I'm a service provider, I will look at only information that I need and then what information I will provide, which means there is a sequence of handoffs of data from the manufacturer till the uh, tire puncture shop owner, where in which different sets of data is going to be required. And for that, each of them, if they have to participate in this economy, for them to be able to connect to this network is by way of APIs. And, and I'm sure most of you already know what's the power of API. Ramco is big in API because not only we are an enterprise solutions provider, we also have partnerships uh, or integrations to various global uh, solutions because the clients uh, of ours 
or global clients and they have uh, different legacy systems, homegrown systems, or other enterprise solutions which you have to integrate into. And the best and the most optimal way is to do through the APIs. And in IoT, even more important that we do it such a way that each of us know what we want to publish or what we want to uh, uh, consume from a subscription perspective. And hence, as the other service provider saying that this is what I need, so give me the data exchange or information exchange through APIs. Big data analytics, uh, in my uh, perspective, this has been uh, going around for nearly 30 to 35 years, what we call as uh, analytics in various forms and shapes. Now we call it as data science, and I don't know what they'll call in the future, but data at the end of the day, getting transferred to usable information is what is the underlying information. AI, uh, we are still figuring out what is AI. Uh, I'm actually a research scientist now about getting into my PhD and probably would have scratched the surface about understanding what AI is. And that through only through a few uh, a few uh, uh, statistical models that we have uh, understood. The reason why, because AI today is limited by human being, uh, folks like me. I designed a system thinking it's going to be artificially intelligent, but then that's limited to the statistical models, rules, uh, procedures, boundary conditions, and information that I provide to that system to uh, think. The moment I say you think, which means there has to be no boundary condition, but then right at this point, we are limited by our device and our design of what AI is. But I think that will grow and that's actually growing. All of us are waiting for the breakthrough on quantum computing per se. Once that uh, qubits are able to now go beyond this uh, binary uh, concept of the world of uh, then, stay in non-binary world where possibilities become actually information and that could be processed. That's probably where we feel the AI could actually evolve. Let's, let's wait and see. Robotics have become more and more intelligent now. They are uh, ambient. They sense what's the surroundings. They're able to react to their surroundings. They don't do mechanical repetitive work again and again. Rather, they're able to react, understand, adapt. And that's something which is also happening now. All of these various uh, uh, elements actually brings this concept of IoT and its business opportunities today to be taken into the actual realization phase. I'm sure every one of us have at least one smart uh, watch or one smart band or something that is there in our house in various forms and shapes. And we also have probably a smart bulb now. Uh, we talk about uh, a specific type of bulb can have better life than another type of bulb. And that's because not because of anything else. It's the same electricity, it's the same house it's generating, but the fact is that the way it's designed to, to absorb the same amount of current, but then provide a different uh, uh, ambient, uh, different, uh, uh, for no other word, light, uh, and be able to provide that in a longer duration makes it either smart or optimal. Uh, that's how the whole world is changing to this. I talked about API economy. This is the one thing which if you are in the IoT ecosystem, if you don't have API as part of your enabling enabling infrastructure, then you would not come to the game at all of IoT. So two, two uh, different pictures. There is uh, the uh, petrol pump or the, there's a fuel station and there is uh, the jewelry shop. Now, how are these two connected in what form and shape, right? Uh, we can simply say that, hey, the same customer who is going to the fuel shop also comes to the jewelry shop. And that's the very outside in view of what's the common between these two pictures at the end of the day, right? But let's see. It's not just that, it's about the intelligence. The intelligence being uh, the fuel uh, pump knows that, Jack, I have a certain set of, a certain type of uh, a car. I used to go on, let's say, a uh, Honda Accord. And I used to use the regular uh, uh, fuel and uh, I used to put specific amount of fuel every time I never top up off uh, top of the, the, the tank as we call, it, right? Which means I was living within a certain uh, 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 what we call as uh, commercial conditions or uh, uh, income capacity that I used to have. Now, suddenly last five uh, occurrences of the same fuel pump, I go there, I don't go on a Honda Accord, let's say I go on a Mercedes Maybach or, or or let's say go on a BMW 5 Series. How? Because the fuel pump knows that I'm actually now on the BMW because it's connected by devices. Assume this is the ecosystem. Now, it, not only that, I go on a BMW 5 Series, I now actually top up my tank every time I go. I don't really care about a specific set of uh, fuel quantity I put over there. 
and not only that i actually go around buy more stuff in the the shop connected to the fuel store now previous world when i was in a within a specific income capacity when i go to the jewelry shop the jewelry shop because they are connected world told the jewelry a shopkeeper this is so and so with income potential and this is the habit and next time when i go when i am in this bmw world when i go the same shopkeeper if with information is available to the shopkeeper they are going to come up and uh, not just show me probably gold but probably they're going to show platinum to me and from platinum they're going to not just show platinum they're going to show excessive uh, jewelry which i don't want really or might not have come to even actually buy now why is that because the other he- behavior that i never used to get out of my car in the honda accord world but in bmw world i go out and buy whatever i want just spend more money on the fuel station means that i am a spender not a buyer per se difference being buyer goes with specific purpose spender just spends whatever that they see as more an impact or a impulse purchase now that is what we call as intelligence now this intelligence is the difference that is the world that connects the various devices data coming from the same environment same set of uh, instruments same set of devices but then make sense out of it by an intelligent system which pushes this data into different buckets and presents that in different forms and shapes to the various stakeholders right and these are all the various ways by which this could actually happen from a implementation perspective i'm sure most of you have heard about swarm intelligence <coughs> sorry i think recently about 3 4 days back uh, <coughs> was one of the avid uh, work from home friend of mine uh, posted uh, uh, a set of uh, birds coming back home and it was exactly in the same fashion that you're seeing on the right side third where the specific uh, bird uh, flocks as if it's in uh, in a lambda or an uh, infinity loop per se when they go back to their typically the another it's a swarm intelligence right which means each bird in that swarm actually was following the other bird or the other bird or the other bird but collectively they had intelligence to go from point a to point b that is they had intelligence collectively to go from where they were searching for food to be able to go back home that's the ultimate information where how do i don't have to instill intelligence in all of the devices that is there deployed rather how can i sparingly utilize this pub sub model or swarm intelligence model to be able to make each device do its part or react to the requirement from the other device that actually has done a certain activity uh, in i'm just uh, diluting it down to so so that it's easy for us to understand between us right and of course this is enabled by you uh, engineers uh, oh, I so said initially I said I'm not an engineer per se. I just use the information and then try to make sense out of it from a business perspective. How this is stored? How is this converted to inform data? And how is it transmitted? All comes from the access and senses. Uh, I don't want to go detail into it, but some of the similar models were in which we have various layers of uh, uh, from the edge uh, for or what we call as from the external uh, or the uh, sensory world of let's say an automotive from then across to command center or a cloud storage or an application command control how the data actually moves across and uh, the various uh, uh, companies on the top sap ariba yada they are all major players in the concept of uh, each layer uh, cisco and uh, motorola and uh, for that matter even uh, uh, bmw is one of the leaders in the edge computing world specifically in the ot space so uh, we all talked about data 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 a lot and we talked uh, very specifically about information per se right now that is the key uh, representation of the slide here we talking about ai and ai to an extent is about deriving intelligence from the noise that is around data right the function of converting a set of data to a specific requirement for the stakeholder is what is intelligence artificial intelligence will come back to it later but deriving intelligence of noise is what we call as a function of x or function of a set of uh, architecture or an application or a simple uh, extraction of data from a data lake that is what creates the first step of intelligence and from then on being able to combine this set of information from the data and uh, provide it as a report 
for repetitive uh, uh, distribution or as an analysis provide a further business value driven uh, analytics to a consumer or to an industrial body or to even for that matter uh, iei stnsc uh, over a period of time knowing that so much uh, seminars have happened using a certain instrument or certain communication protocol like zoom rather than that data being available instead of zoom uh, for so much of cost that i've incurred on doing it if i have to use it a different platform what will be the cost of it that analytics part of it getting the value and then base basis you will be able to decide what's going to be your next purchasing power or what's going to be your next operating model is something where is the function and that is driven by intelligence right artificial uh, the concept of uh, i'm sure most of you understand the reasons in frequency is the most repeatedly used uh, artificial or rather uh, intuitive model where in which Uh, if let's say you go to google uh, the concept of cookies that they put out on the browsers they know exactly how many or what pages that you keep repeatedly uh, visiting and that kind of goes by the the frequency part of it and then uh, what was the last recent page that you visited from a recency point of view so recency frequencies is the first step of getting into uh, creating some artificial uh, decision models which is the artificial intelligence to start with and then that kind of goes into a future where we i'm also personally uh, studying on is neural networks where it starts coming from this simple recency frequency to uh, prescriptive to predictive to actually completely uh, ai centric models where we can decide on the fly if i have to uh, sell a barrel of oil in a given location let's say i uh, have capacity to trade uh, trade uh, barrels of oil how can i from the point of my production either increase the throughput of uh, the oil field or rather uh, tone it down or cap the whole uh, uh, oil pump itself oil well itself all can be decided based on what information i used to sell that barrel of oil or what information i have in the trading market i get for the barrel of oil so if you can look at it the the kind of uh, vast uh, uh, potential where what's being traded and to that directly have an impact of to be able to cap a uh, oil oil well or uh, tone it down or for that matter increase the productivity is how the whole concept of an iot to an ai can be combined into and why i said oil because that's the most talked about in the, in the current covid capacity where practically less than 5% of the automobiles or consumption of oil is happening or fossil fuel is happening per se hence the us oh, oil mm-hmm. is kind of now in a negative capacity not even a positive capacity meaning it's actually uh, paying money to produce oil rather than actually the other way around where you're supposed to pay money to buy fuel that's where it is right now right okay so uh i've i've spoken a lot about this uh, what's the, the opportunity and what's the role of big data per se and the moment you have enough data and uh, applying statistical models on top of the big data or data per se as data like lake as we call lake now going on to ai is where the actual uh, value can be derived from the various iot device centric uh, information is coming from the data and the sensory sensory uh, devices so from now on i'll be going slightly faster uh, some of the uh, models that we spoke about is uh, uh, sorry uh, so uh, just a, a representative models that i'm talking about uh, we want to apply ai on top of uh, what kind of a data set if you want using image and sound then you're looking at cnn models which is convolution neural networks uh now we're talking about transactional data sequences we're talking about long short term lstms which means at a certain point in time we uh, pick up a set of data uh, create the next layer of uh, prediction and then from then we forget the previous layer and then from the non goes that's the kind of models text nlps i think most of you heard about nlp servers nlp models nowadays and behavior reinforcement learning right reinforcement learning is very important specifically in the automotive sector today uh, very connectly very directly connected to the insurance premiums that's currently being used uh, as uh, 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 currently uh, i think it's already in 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 use in, in europe as well as the russian markets russian automotive markets right on heavy industries from a, a manufacturing or a marketing or sales perspective prediction models or event interpolations or churns or cross selling up selling uh, if you're using a marketing tool or if you're using a sales tool how to get what data point like we said what's a, what's the uh, common factor between yeah fuel pump uh, data to a jewelry pump data that's where the cross selling up selling models come into effect if you properly utilize the statistical models 
Um, these are all the real world examples of what could be the use of uh, AI in IoT per se. I'm sure because you're recording it, when you have time, you can actually uh, play it back and then go through that. But uh, one point is the fitness and health tracking as a variable uh, information. That's something is already now realized. Now we are now looking at connected uh, uh, fitness bands. Uh, now people have started giving you saying, okay, you, uh, Jack, uh, had walked 10,000 steps. Now your friend who's also in the same device walked 12,000 steps. Do you want me to connect to the both of you so we can create a competition? That's now becoming a reality already. I'm sure most of you are doing it. And could be somebody who's a friend, which I've uh, accepted, or it could be uh, my data goes to the, the cloud in, in, say, in Samsung. And Samsung now gives top 10 people who are walking more steps and then says, hey, spy of you seem to be walking a lot. Why don't you guys get together? So there is so much opportunity that can happen just by the sheer factor of device data being pulled into a cloud. And then that analytics and working on top of that creating an ecosystem, and hence, it could be a viable business model or just a social introduction platform also. Healthcare is, is the most appreciative, uh, uh, most uh, required industry, which is going to use this now as we speak, COVID-19, there are innumerable uh, models of artificial intelligence uh, from the various uh, data that's coming out from the field. Uh, every university of any quality in the world today is churning out so much of data and I'm connected to at least two or three of the universities, a uh, um, couple of them in, uh, in one in Singapore, one in Australia, and one in the US. We're able to find out to the fact that uh, there was some uh, kind of uh, uh, data that said certain type of blood groups are more resistant. Certain types of people uh, at a certain age that they actually had put certain boosters as kids before two years. All those data points actually has started coming true now. The recovery percentages that we see in various countries in matured markets as against uh, uh, in growing markets like India uh, or Southeast Asian markets per se, those data points are now getting actually being true. So that's something which is very important because uh, good for us, I mean, bad for the uh, humanity per se, but good for us that this happened so that we understand from it, uh, the design systems around it now from a COVID perspective so that next when the situation, God forbid, should not happen, we are more than ready to take care of that, uh, um, encounter that, uh, and actually eradicate it much faster with a connected network and uh, information sharing model. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, uh, talking about this. this uh, again, disclaimer, we have uh, a smart uh, port uh, asset management already in, in use in one of the Southeast Asian countries from Ramco Systems. And we are also collaborating with Singapore government uh, on uh, smart city initiatives also. Uh, specifically, I'll give you one of the examples uh, as use case uh, in the next few slides. This is just one uh, slide I want to take about a couple of more minutes. Uh, blockchain and IoT or blockchain and AI. That's something which been uh, a very, very uh, close to heart topic for me. Uh, I'm not sure how much of people understand what's uh, a distributed ledger per se, but what I will say is that in the uh, network of five uh, different uh, uh, users, let's say um, the, again, you'll go back to the same uh, automobile uh, example. The manufacturer does not know who is the, uh, the actual driver after the second, third purchase. And the driver, the manufacturer's uh, certified service provider might not be the third owner of the vehicle who is going to the service provider. Similarly, the spare parts may not be from a registered spare parts provider of the manufacturer, which means now after second or a third uh, rotational sale of the, the car, there is a disconnected system, no disconnected ecosystem. But then can all of this brought into a hosted uh, shared ledger or a distributed ledger where the car on its own, if it has a capacity, to then transmit data and not to the manufacturer only or not to the uh, uh, trusted source of uh, the manufacturer certified service provider a service provider certified spare parts manufacturer and so on so instead i as uh, the driver or the owner of the car can decide to say let me participate in something called jacknet uh, blockchain and jacknet blockchain is uh, an independent trustless system where all the data from the car and the driver's behavior gets pulled over there and now Ford can, in addition to its trusted ecosystem of distributors, spare parts providers and all the other, can also connect to JackNet and then find out what's happening to my car, uh, which I manufactured 15 years back, 20 years back. 
what's the data it's providing, who's consuming the data. Same can now be, forget food, let's say uh, Maruti service provider who does agnostic service to all manufacturing and non manufacturing, Maruti service uh, or TVS service for that matter, services all cars, right? So TVS now not only connected to its uh, uh, partners like Maruti, let's say Ford, it also connects to Jacknet and it knows now based on the TVS uh, value service partner can now offer the driver at a, a discount uh, more than what it used to offer to the other uh, connected partners. So this is what I'm talking about where a, a database which is shared, not owned by one organization or one set of people, it's shared by I as a driver or my car and the driver data or all the people who are in this ecosystem own a piece of the data and they share that. So the shared economy model as we call this Uber world or the other worlds on shared economy is something which fundamentally can only be designed and delivered by the blockchain. And if we take that, extrapolate that to the devices and its intelligence, and on top of that, the data and information we can extract from this shared ledger, in my uh, uh, perspective, uh, personal perspective, that's going to be the utopian. Uh, let's see where and how it happens, right? Uh, as I said, the challenges we have in the adoption of IoT is limited to what we have designed or what we uh, assume or what we create per se. The more and more people collaborate, the expansion or the adaption can actually be exponentially faster and then bigger. Roadmap of IoT per se, the concept of IoT should uh, in, in to, to kind of reduce it, should not be assumed to be uh, all brought into the device itself and making it too, too bulky or too thick rather keep it to it what needs to be, make it serve its purpose and then connect it using OLA networks so that you can start adopting an IoT uh, or IoT centric uh, ecosystem immediately. And then from then on, and, and different layers to be able to either add more capacity of devices or add more capacity in the OLA network, such a way that there's a business value that's coming over. I'll skip this part. Uh, I'm just going to only one example, uh, which currently, uh, as I said, it's a disclaimer. This is uh, Ramco Systems uh, uh, R&D uh, output, uh, R&D labs output per se. Uh, reacting to the COVID-19 situation, uh, Ramco Systems has actually already implemented this and there is a global uh, reach out to various large organizations uh, where in which during the lockdown and once the lockdown gets uh, relaxed, there are going to be implementations of these solutions uh, across the world. This is again the, the fear, uncertainty, and the kind of uh, depression that we're going through across the world. I mean, I was told uh, yesterday, looking at one of the statistical models, out of 240 habited uh, countries in the world, 215 countries actually have COVID. And it was like zapped. And that now has become the new norm, which means if yet uh, a virus called COVID can actually go to 215 countries per se, you cannot now stop it. It's only about how we actually can react to it or encounter it and then kind of come over it from a collected or a, a collaborative network. I'm, I'm sure most of you will have all this statistical data and lockdown, right? So uh, what I heard is I was assuming that each country is going to start opening up, but then I got to know two days back, uh, France is completely locking down its country for another two more months, which was quite a surprise. So what's happening is that most of the organizations right now are looking at a touchless employee experience. We need to touchless employee experience. Right now, every uh, employee experience today is touch from the point of your uh, card systems or your uh, instruments, which lets you in, lets you out, uh, that recognizes you, or for that matter, a sweep or a scan. Everything actually is touch based at this point in time. Now, what the whole world is looking for is a touchless experience. Example this is a touch where now 95% of every uh, biometric device, which was uh, the rule of the roost sometime back, because of the COVID situation has become now the biggest uh, point of failure or the uh, biggest point of risk for any organization which is of any scale. Plastic, it's been proven that uh, even COVID uh, from a Singapore uh, um, uh, government data perspective stays live for about three days in the plastic. You can't screen beyond a certain point, right? Even the thermal scanning that was done in the airport has not made any big benefit for countries like India, for that matter, Malaysia, Singapore, for that matter. 
systems where they are not intelligent they are manual even though they might lock and unlock but you still have to interact with those uh, edge systems or uh, doors or uh, uh, things that let you or you have to get in and get out this is a projection uh, the example this was given not from us it from an, uh, an industrial body in which they had a thousand thousand member uh, uh, in one shift and one person affected uh, at the point of uh, the second or the third uh, biometric scan which means in the 30 days practically 50% of their shift capacity is down because of the infection possibility now uh, b as ramco launched some time back uh, uh, a, a facial recognition software uh, and uh, that being part of uh, the organization and entry systems so let me just run that quickly through a video it's just a few minutes and this is again 3 uh, 3 and a half years back it went into production and it's there in some of the uh, large industrial houses in middle east uh, and uh, in uh, apac countries so it recognizes somebody who is uh, registered in the system but you still can see that they have to interact with the door and the devices to be able to go in and then there is one another associate of mine who comes in not recognized and then the person has to physically interact the system to recognize themselves and stuff like that right now let's take the other one which now we have gone on to uh, uh, introduce in the market and that's uh, waiting for the lockdown to be uh, uh, to taken off uh, so that we can start implementing globally uh, very specifically in the north american markets as well as the uh, uh, asian american markets asian pacific markets right uh thermal scanning uh, we're talking about narrow narrow scanning uh, thermal as well as wide area scan when you talk when you talk about narrow scanning is somebody who is coming to the coming to the scanning device or scanning uh, instrument and then uh, projecting or providing themselves to so that based on this the device uh, uh, calibration it tells that person to be uh, allowed to enter the premise to be able to work or not based on the calibration being done and that to the gate devices are completely iot and edge enabled resulting which there is zero touch required for a person who is uh, assumed or who is calibrated and uh, identified to be allowed to enter the premise to be able to continue on to their work now this could be for as i said uh, a narrow scan a wide area scan where in which we are looking at not only the person but let's say in a given uh, uh, planogram of an office or environment or in a given environment of a location it does a wide area scan by which it it finds out Uh, between 15 people available in that uh, given uh, spot or given uh, uh, geo location how much of uh, the social distancing what we call as 1 uh, meter 2 meter 3 meter which you calibrate again is actually active meaning 15 people of that the ratio is that uh, the social distancing of 1 meter is not being properly implemented because they are very close to each other so that's another wide area scan so narrow scanning of what individual wide area scan of what a cluster of people those are all uh, opportunities that something which we are now addressing now in the next upcoming solution all of this again enabled through uh, actual implementation of ai on top of iot device data also recognizes voice which creates another opportunity for folks to actually not have to experience the touch uh, or uh, uh, actually experience touchless system now you don't have to get into touch or anything that is possibility of a contamination model hello ki please mark my attendance that's it based on the recognition of uh, the voice as well as uh, uh, the other uh, ambient data and the schedule and the uh, what we call as the shift data automatically the the process and the person and the time sheet gets booked in this case right so uh, now this is the actual uh, going forward implementation where in which we're talking about uh, scans in in specific entry points and we're talking about scans which are completely going to be touchless the uh, devices by their design will actually interact with the calibrated data systems and accordingly they will operate resulting which a complete seamless touch experience is what's coming out and it's already now uh, uh, in the pipeline for implementation globally from ranko systems so that's uh, where i am uh, at this point i'm not sure uh, am i on time or am i late or i'm ahead uh, uh, praveen or uh, mr ramdas i think uh, uh, we should allow for some questions and then see if we have time check okay i'll just leave it in the last slide this is the business benefit that we uh, project from a simple iot device 
and a data on top of it, which we call as AI ML platform of Ramco. I'll leave this slide here as the last slide. I have one more uh, use case, but I'll just not show that. Like, that's more industrial, uh, uh, IoT centric uh, industrial output, which in a way I spoke about it uh, as the boiler plant uh, uh, capacity, uh, wear and tear, and uh, its uh, maintenance work order uh, life cycle. So I'm open to questions now. Yeah. Any questions? Dr. Bala, can you? Uh, yes, Bala. Hi, sir. Yes. What's uh, your so For me, one doubt, sir. In IoT, uh, what about the security for uh, data, sir? Um, how the data is secured? That means, uh, is there any hacking will be done, how, how the data will be protected from uh, uh, while fetching to the cloud, the, all the data. So. Right. So you know that, right? Um, at the point of uh, origin, uh, we could actually secure the data, the device itself, by making the data itself as non-readable data. And similarly, mm -hmm. when you are transmitting data from uh, using machine, where in which from one device to the edge system, and from there now across to the gateway, data can be completely secure uh, by uh, different protocols. Once the device is able to transmit data, after that, the, the current typical telemetry or telephonic or internet enabled protocols can be used to, to secure the data. Okay. Is there any software used for that one, sir? Uh... Uh, software at the device you're talking about or software at large during the transmission of data? Yes, sir, during uh, large transmission of data. Sir. There are, there are multiple, there are multiple, uh, depends on uh, the manufacturer. Let's say, okay. example, uh, we have we have uh, started working with, as I said, uh, Motorola, and we started working with our uh, other partners, uh, uh, wherein which Honeywell is our global partner. So we have mm -hmm. provided specific uh, protocols which are to be used doing this. And hence, uh, remember we talked about the API uh, framework and the API offering. That will make a big difference to us going forward, to ensuring that the API can be now for the purpose of securing data over uh, uh, the distances of, from point A to point B. Okay. And then one more doubt uh, for me, uh, can you please explain a simple in blockchain, sir? What is a blockchain and the, how is the difference between blockchain and IoT? Uh, it's a very <laughs> different topic. Uh, okay. I, my uh, email ID as well as my contact uh, points in uh, LinkedIn is available. Uh, let's okay. take it offline. Uh, that's going to be, a, a, it's a close to my heart discussion point. We'll do it offline. Sure, sir. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, sir, could you please tell me about that uh, blockchain and IoT, uh, the future of it, and then the industry perspectives, and what level the project is going on in IoT related uh, blockchain based projects? Okay, so. Uh... To my knowledge, uh, other than my own project implemented in Middle East, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, projects coming up uh, in trade finance systems uh, in, in against uh, in, in, in the APAC region. Uh, again, uh, where in which, uh, let me stop sharing, I think there is no point. To I'll just continue on the audio if that's okay with you. Uh, so uh, what I was saying is that uh, there, are, uh, in, there are industry level uh, pilots that's already going on right now. Uh, MySec is something uh, as, as an organization which most of you know is a, 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 it's a global logistics provider, and they already have uh, IoT and uh, blockchain centric solutions, wherein which uh, they take a product uh, in a in a container. See, MySec owns shipping lines and containers, right? They don't want the product inside; they only transport that. But their containers and their shipping lines talk to the various. Uh, partners in the ecosystem, one mm -hmm. one central location. And from that to be uh, communicating to the various ports, that's why one of the use cases which I sh shared to you was smart uh, ports in the IoT use case model. And subsequently yeah. from then, to also the folks who are uh, actually trans transporting those products. This mm -hmm. means the folks can uh, understand and trust each other or they can say, I don't trust the other person. And the whole trade finance system was brought in saying that the producer and the buyer in two different regions did not trust each other and hence they needed a bank to come in, in between. 
this shipping line and logistics is an industry which is already experimenting where they're cutting the middleman and using the uh, distributed ledger for all the ecosystem partners to write their set of data. And that is also contributed by the uh, containers and shipping line IoT devices. It's already happening. Blockchain based. Sorry. Well, academics. Okay. I didn't get the question. And I, I like to know we want to implement in the simulation based uh, uh, in uh, blockchain. Is it possible to do simulation in a blockchain and verify the the uh, section uh, benefits and all those things? So, I mean, uh, I would rather direct this to to Praveen. He's actually a, a far more experienced person than me in blockchain. My experience in blockchain is very limited to what project I implemented. Uh, Praveen okay. is a wealth of information. I would right. rather direct, he direct you to be able to uh, associate with Praveen to do all your simulations. And he oh, yeah. probably have multiple opportunities for it. Uh, okay. Mr. Mr. Raju, uh, yes, sir. Uh, please send mail to chairman, sir, and uh, oh. we'll take it forward from there. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there's not much questions, uh, I mean, we can probably uh, break off for the session today. Yes, sir. Pravin? Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for the pro uh, very wonderful uh, session. Uh, though it's not a one hour session, we really packed a lot of information and uh, showed a lot of uh, perspective from the industry side. And uh, from the industry side, uh, we rarely get uh, such a large uh, uh, perspective, Jack. Uh, thank you so much from uh, Institute of Engineers uh, side. And uh, we would like to have you for further more uh, uh, the next uh, few uh, things we have whenever your time permits and a nice topic if you can give us i would like to have you again back to uh, the same forum uh, maybe in june sometime thank you very much jack would love to and thank you for having me and uh, be patiently listening to what i was saying thank you yeah if you can share the ppt uh, with uh, us in the email that'll be great sir. Uh, I uh, won't be able to because it's proprietary to Ramco per se, but then that had to do with the recording. Uh, Praveen, I'm sorry for that. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Praveen? Yeah. Yeah, about that uh, EA, TNSC, regularly doing some uh, this type of kind of meetings and all those things. Yeah, actually, Jack dropped out, I think. Okay, okay, no problem. Leave it. Jack dropped. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Praveen, sir, for a wonderful session. It was a most interactive session and uh, uh, industry specific, and it is also need of the hour. So, the yes. people would be thronging for this, actually. And uh, actually, uh, IEA TNAC alone can make it out again and again with. Uh, uh, perfect uh, speaker and a perfect topic on the table and uh, and Praveen sir uh, thank you so much for bringing him uh, for a wonderful session here for the maybe the short session by next month uh, whatever we are planning for a big workshop that will add value to the, all those speakers who are in the pipeline so uh, people can watch all these videos uh, uh, in YouTube, as, as Sir said, so everything is available in our YouTube channel to this channel and also make sure kindly subscribe to the IEI uh, Tamil Nadu State Center. Tamil Nadu State Center. The YouTube channel is there. Entire recorded will be available in the YouTube channel. You can uh, everybody can uh, view that and then subscribe that. Uh, Bala, with this, we close it. Thank you, yes, sir. We can close it, sir. Thank, thank you so you, much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir.